a comparison between the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4's graphics. Starting off at 5 is Odd Rort. Now in the stream, I think this one wasn't really easy to do a real comparison, but now that we have 4K footage of both, it's a fair amount easier to see that the Gran Turismo 7 is really impressive. In some cases, this game feels like looking at film. Pause it and you see these beautiful ray-traced motion blurred reflections as compared to the PlayStation 4 where you see the environmental box ones. And a lot of the footage when you pause it, it just looks like a photograph. Inside, I mean, you see a lot of impressive lights reflecting off of all of the various surfaces. Outside, you see motion blur in a manner that really does a good job convincing you that you are watching film. I mean, interior shots, exterior shots, lighting and reflections are really the key here, I think. That's not to say that the PlayStation 4s look bad, but like in motion, all of this stuff is just significantly more impressive. And number four is Astro's Playroom versus Astro Bot Rescue Mission. This is a sequel to a PSVR game, although I'm gonna go ahead and say they didn't specifically say anything about the new PSVR. I have to imagine it's going to be part of it. However, I would like it if you were able to play it without the VR. Just on account, the original is actually a great platformer. That's fun with VR, sure, but probably could have reached a wider base if they had figured out ways for there to be ultimately another mode of play. I mean, as you can see graphically, there are some upgrades, but not huge ones. I'm not so certain this is really going to be something that we're in desperate need of comparison between the two. However, I am interested to see just exactly what they do with the VR. And like I said, it's overall just a fun platformer on its own. In some respects, I wonder how much they're going to be attempting to show off the new controller. It did seem for certain that was what they wanted to do. At number three, we want to talk about what NBA 2K21 looks like compared to NBA 2K20. Now, I want to go ahead and say we did not get a lot to judge this game off of. In some respects, there's some big time social distancing going on in this trailer. Although, they also made sure to show us the difference between the character models, which in some respects, we might be looking at a big jump. Our man is very sweaty in this new trailer. He is very affected by lighting. And in previous versions of the game, obviously we've got stadium lighting, which can look amazing, don't get me wrong. But I do for sure think that they went out of their way to show us a lighting situation that would maybe not be typical, just to show off some form of better lighting. I don't know exactly how reflective of gameplay this footage is going to be, but I'll say it just looks a lot more human than anything in the previous game, anything in the previous game. Look at him. Number two, we're going to do a comparison between this Demon's Souls remake, some Dark Souls 3, and a little Demon's Souls on the PS3. It's obviously not entirely fair to just directly compare this new version of it to the old version of it. Demon's Souls was originally a PS3 game, which is two generations, not one generation. But we do see a big jump from what we saw on the PlayStation 4. Although PlayStation 4 is a pretty game, don't get me wrong. We've got big environments, good environmental effects. The sort of scale of those effects is up significantly here though. Like look at the rain and the scale and the magic effects that we're looking at. Like look at that, that's beautiful. Nice environmental fog. I mean what we're talking about is along the lines of just everything looks more cinematic maybe. It's not as though this doesn't look good, it's that this looks way better. And I think there's obvious things like poly count and better effects, but less obvious things like ambient occlusion that are totaling in something that looks just way better. And finally, at number one, we're talking about Resident Evil 7 versus Resident Evil 8. The PlayStation 5's 8 was kind of a surprise reveal, and it's really incredibly detailed and pretty looking and scary looking and grimy looking. But we have to remember that Resident Evil 7 on the PlayStation 4 looked really good. Do I think there's an obvious jump in what's possible? Yes, I do. We do see some general better realism as far as lighting. Hair looks better. Smaller environmental texturing looks better. I mean, we're kind of going for the same vibe with the creepy haunted house thing, but this one's much more grandiose and textured. The outdoor environments look far more realistic this time around. And while Resident Evil 4 went for this more mold-oriented nasty baddie, we're kind of seeing a little bit more of a mystical supernatural type baddie this time around, albeit a little bit along the lines of what you'd see in Resident Evil. So stylistically, there's a big difference. As far as fidelity goes, there is a definite jump as well. I mean, obviously. As far as what we're looking at on the PlayStation 5, I mean, everything has had PNT upped. It's all incredible looking.